Okay, I don't get questions about this, but I just wanted to update you guys uh, and give you a health update, okay, on on how I'm feeling in general. Now, uh, that wouldn't be such a big deal uh, unless there was actually a big difference in my health between now and a year or two ago. Uh, I just looked at that old video where I changed the name of Allergic Hobbit to Jack Crafty, and I was 40 pounds heavier in that video than I am now. And uh, I was thinking about how I used to feel back then uh, and why I got into flint napping and all that. So I just want to explain briefly um, that sort of thing in this video. Okay, so when I first got into flint napping, it was because I had a need to feel productive. I wasn't really feeling productive at work. And I missed the stuff I used to do when I was a kid. I had spent many years focusing mainly on making money and mainly on finding ways of making money, uh, getting training for my job and stuff, uh, for my different jobs that I've had, uh, trying to find my my way into what I like to do best. And uh, spent many years, also I started a family, spent many years not doing what I like to do, basically. And I wanted to get back into something that I really enjoyed doing. So I, I knew I enjoyed Native American stuff and arrowheads since I was a kid. Very young, since starting at seven or eight years old. Okay. So I got into flint napping as a way to, again, feel productive, but also to start feeling happier because I wasn't feeling happy. So uh, it, it was... Um, it was quite a struggle, okay, at first. And I, I really didn't um, care too much about the struggle part. But looking back, uh, if I had known now, had known then what I know now, it would have been a lot smoother, a lot better, and a lot less frustrating for me and everybody else. Because it was frustrating in the beginning to get into flit napping and getting into a hobby. Um, as funny as that might sound, it was, it was stressful every, every minute except for when I was actually doing it. Okay. So uh, the differences between now and then, one, the weight, I'm 40 pounds heavier, lighter, 40 pounds lighter. Uh, the other major difference is the depression. I used to have depression and I've, I had problems with depression for 30 years, right, since I was a teenager, all the way up until my 40s. So, um, let's say, I, I have a little, a little journal that I kept when I was like 13, and I, I was depressed in my writings. I would talk about my depression at age 13, and uh, I was depressed all the way up until 50. I'm 57 now. It's slowly going away, and... Uh, the change in my diet had a lot to do with it. Also the change in what I'm focused on in life, okay? But the things that I used to experience all the time were constant fatigue, uh, shortness of breath for just no reason, just I couldn't really feel uh, like I was, you know, fully uh, breathing fully. I don't know how to explain it. Um, muscle pain with either light or heavy exercise. It didn't matter. I still get muscle pain during exercise. And of course, the recovery was not pleasant. Uh, these days, when I exercise, I can recover much faster. I do get sore, but not nearly as much as I used to. I used to have mood swings, depending on a day. Okay, I would have up and down days, up and down months or weeks. I, I, it was not predictable. I would go up and down as far as my depression and my moods. Uh, I would make videos when I was feeling good during the ups, and then during the downs, I wouldn't do anything except maybe flit nap and do some things, uh, other things related to that hobby, you know, make bows and stuff. Uh, but during the bad times, I would have mood swings, I would be easily triggered, I would have a confrontational attitude, uh, constant irritation and anger, especially on the very low points. It was the only thing that motivated me to get up in the morning was anger 
I had to be angry at something to get motivated to actually move and do things. So that was not good for everybody. Um, and then I would withdraw from society because I could see what I was feeling. I knew what I was acting like. Uh, and I would just withdraw from society. I wouldn't interact with people because I didn't want to be confrontational during those down times. The up times weren't that bad. Um, now, it did affect my job. It did affect my work. And I, I slowly started to go downhill. Uh, as far as my memory, my ability to do my job, uh, the biggest impact of uh, my poor diet, I, I'm, a, I'm convinced it was my diet m mainly, uh, other than the fact that I'm easily susceptible to depression, my diet was very poor. It was 90% carbohydrate and just junk once in a while. I'd have some good stuff, but it was junk and carbohydrates 90% of the time. Lots of coffee, lots of stimulants like uh, monster drinks and stuff like that. Uh, Gatorade and constant sugar. So it was affecting my moods, it was affecting my attitude, and it was starting to affect my memory. And I think I was experiencing, on top of all that, early onset dementia and disorientation. And I was getting these shimmering migraines, not pain in my, not like a headache, but in my eyesight, I would see these shimmerings. I don't know if you guys have experienced that or not. And there would be like zigzag lines and they would start real small first. And then we get really large and it would look like you have shimmerings in front of your, your eyes. And they would last, you know, for about 20 minutes and then would fade after a couple hours, completely go away. And I would get dizzy spells. Um, if I, if I lay, lean my head back or if I was doing something overhead, I would get a dizzy spell. It was just getting really bad. Uh, I couldn't stretch like I used to. My joints were stiff. Uh, and it was just, I felt like I was going downhill in many different ways. So what I, what I recommend, if you guys are experiencing the same kind of stuff and you're using uh, flint napping as a way to uh, get more in tune with or grounded with reality and uh, trying to actually be productive, um, if you're in the same boat that I was, Try elimination diets. Eliminate foods that you think are going to be, or you think might be affecting you adversely. And that includes alcohol or smoking too, okay? Uh, and it has affected my, my hobby quite a bit. I can see I, I'm improving in my, not only my ability to read and do research, but in my flit napping ability, my ability to communicate with people more regularly and now I'm able to do a lot more videos in a shorter period of time and focus and actually remember what I researched so I can actually talk about it on video. Okay? And my recollection when I'm speaking, I can actually remember words where I was at a point where I would have these workarounds. If I couldn't remember a word, I'd substitute it really quick with another word. And these little workarounds for my memory loss and uh, inability to speak without a lot of effort now it just kind of flows so there's a big difference I had to cut out all carbohydrates everything I'm down to three grams of carbohydrates or less every day now of course during the Thanksgiving and the holidays I ate apple pie and stuff like that I gained like six pounds over the over Christmas holiday Thanksgiving I was pretty good because I just ate mostly the meats and uh, you know I can watch people eat carbohydrates, uh, you know, breads and potatoes and rice and all that. I don't care about that. Just give me the turkey, right? Uh, ate a little bit of cranberry sauce. That was about it. But during Christmas, I ate pies. I ate chocolates. Uh, I had a stocking. My kids gave me a stocking full of candies and stuff, and I ate some of that stuff. And I, I got into a little bit of a relapse into memory loss, uh, fatigue, and just general feeling of uh, despair and it's amazing what diet can do and it sounds funny when I when I watch myself say that I sound like a commercial uh, but yeah it's important to do an elimination diet I had to eliminate all carbohydrates from my diet and sugar especially I just had a grape 
couple days ago just to taste it because I hadn't had a grape in so long, maybe in, in six months or so. And I could immediately feel like something was hitting me, like I had just took a shot of alcohol. It was that strong. The sugar rush from the, from that one grape was that strong. So it, it really does affect me personally, the sugars. And I think I was pre-diabetic. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure I was, even though I've had blood tests before and they were okay. They were in the normal range after fasting, you know. But, but no, I think that I was experiencing some uh, early onset of type 2 diabetes. Uh, recently when I got hospitalized for the cat bite, they did, they ran tests on me, they ran my blood pressure, and, you know, all those things. Uh, everything was good. Everything was really good. So I was very happy about that. Blood pressure was really good. Beats per minute was very good. Uh, I had better stats now than I did 10 years ago, which is amazing. Okay. So I just, mainly what I eat now is, is meats. If I eat vegetables, they have to be greens, okay, and then cooked, cooked greens, not raw, except, <coughs> excuse me, uh, <clears throat> I can eat lettuce, I can eat some cabbage raw, but that's about it. Everything else, if I eat greens, it has to be cooked, and uh, I've learned to eliminate, or to realize what I need to eliminate, because it'll, it'll affect me, it'll affect immediately almost my memory and my mood okay so I just stay away from those and they happen to be all the stuff I like so uh, grains like wheat all my pastries that I used to love I don't touch those anymore it's only meat it's sometimes dairy uh, of course I eat liver uh, along with the meats and spices I'll put salt and pepper especially salt and uh, maybe some garlic and maybe some chili powder and you know down here in Texas we we season our barbecue with a lot of stuff so I still use a lot of that stuff but no sugars I don't put brown sugar or anything on my barbecue uh, so that's about it uh, just wanted to give you guys an update on that because I feel like a hundred percent better and hopefully it'll stay this way for several years because I have a lot that I want to do I want to pack it in to a short period of time and with this increase in both energy and memory capacity and the ability to stay focused and not get not get, be a spaz and go from in every different direction all the time and actually stay on track has been an amazing uh, thing for me. So I just wanted to share that. Okay.